Lewis lead is a modified lead to enhance the amplitude of P waves and thereby enable better arrhythmia analysis. This lead system is useful in detecting P waves during a wide QRS tachycardia and helps in differentiating between ventricular and supraventricular tachycardia. Lewis lead is a modified lead one in which the right arm electrode is placed in the second right intercostal space close to the sternum and a left arm lead is placed in the fourth right intercostal space close to the sternum that is V1 position. Normal P wave has an amplitude of 2.5 mm and a width of 2.5 mm on the ECG. An increase in the amplitude is an indication of right atrial enlargement and an increase in width an indication of left atrial enlargement. When both atria are enlarged, both width and amplitude are increased. P wave abnormalities are best assessed in leads 2 and V1. Normal P wave is upright in lead 2. In V1, a tiny initial spike is followed by a shallow negative wave. P mitral is a notched and broad P wave with taller second peak indicating left atrial enlargement. It may be noted that initial part of P wave is contributed by right atrium as it is activated first and the second part by left atrium which is activated later. It is associated with a prominent negative deflection of P wave in V1, the left atrial component. Magnified ECG tracing showing P mitral in left atrial overload. Tall peaked P wave of right atrial enlargement seen in core pulmonale is known as P pulmonale. The tall P of right atrial enlargement in congenital heart disease is called P congenital. P wave axis is rightward in P pulmonale while it is leftward in P congenital. The initial spike in V1 more than 1.5 mm is also a feature of right atrial enlargement. ECG tracing showing P pulmonale with tall peaked P waves in lead 2. P tricuspidale has been described in tricuspid atresia. The pattern is mirror image of P mitral. The initial peak is taller than the second peak in P tricuspidale. It indicates biatrial enlargement. P wave from a monitor screenshot resembling P tricuspidale. The P wave is wide and first peak appears taller than the second. While atrial enlargement is manifest as changes in P wave, ventricular enlargements are mainly manifest in the QRS complex. There can be secondary changes in the ST segment and T waves. Left ventricular hypertrophy is divided into left ventricular volume overload and pressure overload. Similarly, right ventricular hypertrophy is also divided into pressure and volume overload. Left ventricular volume overload is characterized by small narrow Q waves, tall R waves with upright and tall T waves in lateral leads. Deep S waves are noted in leads V1, V2. Left ventricular volume overload is noted in mitral and aortic regurgitation as well as ventricular septal defect with large left to right shunt and patent ductus arteriosus. Left ventricular volume overload is also known as diastolic overload. Left ventricular pressure overload occurs in systemic hypertension, aortic stenosis and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. It is also known as left ventricular systolic overload. In addition to tall R waves in lateral leads and deep S waves in V1, V2, there will be downsloping ST segment depression and T wave inversion, LVH strain pattern. Severe left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern in severe aortic stenosis. The R wave in V5 and V6 are so tall that they are overlapping with tracings in the channel above. ST segment depression and T wave inversion are seen in inferior and lateral leads. Sokolov line criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy is one of the commonly used though not very specific. It can be stated as follows. S wave in V1 plus R wave in lead V5 or V6 more than 3.5 millivolt or R wave in V5 or V6 more than 2.6 millivolt. 
This is based on tall R waves noted in leads facing the left ventricle and deep S waves in leads facing right ventricle noted in left ventricular hypertrophy. It will correspond to 35 mm and 26 mm respectively with usual standardization of 10 mm to a millivolt. Right ventricular volume overload is manifest as RSR prime pattern in V1, incomplete right bundle branch block pattern. This is typically seen in atrial septal defect with large left to right shunt. RSR prime pattern is seen in V1 and V2, suggestive of incomplete RBBB pattern which can occur in right ventricular volume overload. Right ventricular pressure overload manifests as tall R waves in V1 and deep S waves in V5, V6. In addition, there may be right axis deviation of QRS. When there is right axis deviation, deep S waves are noted in lead 1. Right ventricular pressure overload is seen in pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary hypertension. Right ventricular hypertrophy with tall R in V1, deep S in V6 and right axis deviation. There is associated P pulmonary in lead 2 indicating right atrial enlargement secondary to right ventricular hypertrophy. Sharp positive P wave in V1 also reflect right atrial enlargement. High ventricular hypertrophy can be considered if patterns of both left ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular hypertrophy are seen together. But hypertrophy of one ventricle can sometimes mask the ECG changes due to hypertrophy of the other ventricle. One specific type of biventricular hypertrophy pattern seen in children with congenital heart disease is known as cat's wactyl phenomenon. In this condition, tall biphasic QRS complexes are noted in mid-precordial leads. This is seen classically in large ventricular septal defect with hyperdynamic pulmonary hypertension. Recordings have to be obtained at half standardization, that is 5 mm per millivolt to prevent overlap between the QRS complexes of the different leads so that the voltages can be measured accurately. Tall biphasic QRS complexes are seen in leads V2 to V5 in this ECG, suggestive of cat's wactyl phenomenon. Overlap of QRS complexes between leads above and below are visible, indicating the need for a recording in half standardization. QRS complexes are predominantly negative in leads 1 and AVL, indicating right axis deviation of QRS.